Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I know it's been a while, but I am back. I'm sorry for the wait. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But today is going to be, it's gonna be one of my favorite videos. I hope everything works out for this video. So in order to let that happen, to manifest that, I am going to do a little bit of smudging just before we start the video and then we can go into the video. So I'm just gonna light my Palo Santos here. So we are inviting positive energy into our space. We are inviting clarity, creativity, and beauty into this space right now. Let's make some infinity signs and hmm. Wonderful. So, <laughs> today I have a bunch of books to share with you guys. I mean, when I say I've got like a whole like stack. <laughs> Some of my most favorite books, oh my gosh, they're crumbling down on me. Ah! So, grab a cup of tea, grab a snack. We're gonna chill, we're gonna talk about books. We're gonna talk about stories. Just come hang out with me, okay? Because you guys need to know what I read, what I keep going back to, and what really makes my heart flutter. <laughs> when it comes to reading material, um, I think it will give more insight to the kind of person that I am, how I think, what I like, just my outlook and worldview on things. So I wanted to share that because I wanted to get you guys to reel in and to come in and to just know who Saudia is, okay? A singer, songwriter, actress, avid reader, okay? Humanitarian, lover of life. Before I go on and continue, because girl, I could continue, okay? So I have my notes, so if you see me looking slightly to the left or to the right, I had to write down my notes so that I don't like just babble on because I'm good for that. So the first book that I want to show you guys that I really love, this one is by Rupi Kaur. She's a poet, spoken words writer, just a beautiful author, and she's Caribbean. I believe she's from Trinidad, if I'm not mistaken. And this is just a beautiful composition of romantic self-love and healing poetry with acquiescent illustrations to accompany the author's written words. I think it's a comforting, spark-worthy book that feels like a big sister is giving you a sweet and long hug. This book is a book that you read alone with a cozy blanket and a sweet and warm beverage because, I don't know, there's something very comforting about this book. I mean, from the little illustrations to the words, it was really comforting to me when I was going through a really tough and trivial time in my life and I really needed these poems because if you know nothing about me, I'm a lover of poetry. I write poetry myself and used to write it a lot more when I was younger and this is a sweet, book to read. Just so you know, I've also read Milk and Honey, which is like um, sister books to this by the same author, but I absolutely love the sun and her flowers because I'm a flower child and therefore I'm a flower. 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 <laughs> and I love the sun, the sun, the sun. <laughs> So let's move on to another of my favorite books. So I started off sweet. <laughs> now I'm going to get a bit metaphysical, a bit extraterrestrial, and super imaginative because these series of books by my favorite author, Madeline L. Engel, were written for my soul. 
okay? Literally, she wrote the boats to soothe me and to let me know that I'm okay just as I am. <laughs> a weirdo and a freak. <laughs> this book is a trilogy, but I'm gonna start off with A Wrinkle in Time, which is one of the books in this compact. So A Wrinkle in Time is about a girl's mission to find her lost father, Alex Murray, who is a world-renowned metaphysicist scientist who became lost in the universe on the actualization of his scientific discovery, which is on the grounds of tessering, which is a form of time travel that allows you to travel faster than the speed of light by wrinkling time so that you can jump portals or dimensions or just time itself. Just imagine if time is this and January is here and December is here, the, the concept of wrinkling time is to wrinkle the time so that you can jump from January to December. I, I'm a weirdo. I know what tessering is because I'm a weirdo <laughs> and I love these books. <laughs> So Meg goes on this mission into the universe, the fifth dimension to be exact, to find her father and she goes on this mission with her little brother Charles Wallace and her friend, or I would say crush, <laughs> Calvin O'Keefe who lives in her neighborhood. She also gets help from universal forces embodied in three wise women, Mrs. Witch, Mrs. Watson, and Mrs. Who, who helps her to tesser into the fifth dimension where she can find her father. In the story, Meg discovers herself. She discovers her, her strengths, her weaknesses. They're faced with lots of challenges throughout their journey. It's a story about good conquering evil and how pure energy and light that children possess can actually be great and useful to conquer evil and evil forces and it's also a story about how love conquers all <laughs> I absolutely love this story if, if you don't know by now Ava DuVernay actually created a major motion picture film with Disney on this story A um, Wrinkle in Time and it gave rise to actress like Storm Reid who I absolutely admire I love that girl and um, it was it was good I enjoyed it a lot but I just wish that there was mention of the other children in the Murray family as well as those giant creatures on the planet Exel, which is like the gray planet. And I would have just liked to see how they would have visually portrayed those characters, those giant furry warm creatures that ultimately nursed Meg back to health when she had to make the choice to leave Charles Wallace on Camelot when like things were getting like too intense. I mean eventually she went back to get him but you know after having to leave him she was really broken and I really wanted to see how that happened like on screen. I just wanted to see that because I feel like that was a very important part of the story and I guess there was not a lot of money allotted to the project to accommodate that, so um, that's all I'll say about that. I just love the cutting edge scientific concepts and the spiritual mythology that Madeleine L. Engel uses to create enchanting and magical yet sensible worlds for and around her characters and it's, it's refreshing to me. Okay, and it's enlightening and deeply spiritual and for that I love it <laughs> So let's move on to the second story that's in this book which is called a wind in the door This is another story involving the Murray family Charles Wallace their parents Calvin O'Keefe is also in the story Meg's little boyfriend in the story, Meg's quest is to save Charles Wallace from mitochondritis, which is an affliction of dying microscopic mitochondria in the cell, which is mysteriously and simultaneously linked to a cosmic death of stars within the universe, which her father, Dr. Alex Murray, is also trying to fix. Meg's success is dependent on the battle 
again, against love conquering fear, good over evil. That's the basis of Madeline L. Engel's stories and I love it. So her success is crucial to her brother's survival as well as the survival of the entire cosmos. I mean, the entire universe is resting on this little girl's shoulder, literally. She must also save her well-hated middle school teacher, Mr. Jenkins from the Ethroids, whose main and only evil mission is to destroy the cosmos and uncreate the entire universe. I mean, <laughs> I do not want to get mixed up in these people, okay? I don't. <laughs> only by saving this evil, this evil teacher. Well, he's not necessarily evil, he's just broken, I guess. Only by saving him, she can save Charles Wallace, who's dying, and ultimately the universe. Just imagine, like, in order to save your brother from utter destruction and death, you have to save and basically love an enemy. I mean... The same person who talks shit about you. Talk shit about your family, punish you unfairly, and it's just downright uh, just a nasty, mean-spirited person. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> but I really love this story, and it's very vivid in my mind the imagery is portrayed in this book. <sighs> Okay, so the next story in this book is called A Swiftly Tilting Planet. And in this story, in order to save the world from a, a nuclear war involving the US, Charles Wallace is sent to the past on the back of a unicorn called Gaudier. 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 <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it with a French accent. <laughs> he is sent on the back of Gaudier, shifting his consciousness into historical and ancient figures in order to find the connection between his experiences and those described in a book by an author who somehow has the key to resolving his mission. Meg stays connected with him through this like uh, psychic trance as well while Charles and Gaudier has to fight off the Ethroids, and we already talked about those universal evil forces. However, eventually, Meg's mother-in-law, Mistress O'Keefe, eventually steps in to mis mystically and mysteriously save Charles Wallace from evil forces. I mean, she had the power within her. She's always had that within her, and I guess that's how Meg and Calvin are connected because both their families have some involvement in magical, mystical powers. And in this story though, I must say, um, Meg is grown up. She's married to Calvin, of course now. Calvin's a scientist and Meg's like, you know, I guess a soon to be mother. I, th I think she's um, pregnant at the time. I, I believe she was pregnant at the time of this story. But this story is such like a roller coaster ride. It's but a magical and different exploration on themes like the interconnectedness between the past and the present, will and trust, and the nature of the connection with God. I really enjoyed the story. Um, there's one thing to note though. The Murray family, Meg, Charles Wallace, Mistress O'Keefe, and her husband, Alex Murray, they had more than two children, more than just Meg and Charles, Wall Charles Wallace. Um, they actually had a twin of boys between Meg and Charles Wallace. Their names are Dennis and Sandy Murray. Um, I just wanted to put that out there because that's important information for you guys to know. <laughs> so now I'm going to talk about one of my favorite books from Madeline L. Engel again. <laughs> and this one is called Many Waters. And this story is more spiritual and mystical and mythical and a cerebral take on the whole Noah's Ark story. <laughs> In this book, the twin boys, Sandy and Dennis, they stumble into their research scientist parents' lab. 
in the middle of a scientific experiment and they accidentally teleport into the era of the biblical flood where the earth was populated by supernatural creatures like unicorns, Nephilims who were able to shapeshift into animals at will and who were after the daughters of men, and Seraphims who were angelic beings who served a divine being called El. So the boys get separated initially in the beginning of the story in this like era and they're found by separate parts of Nawa's family. One was found by his immediate family and one was found by his dad or by a, a seraphim who took him to I think he was found by his dad. Yeah, there's a love story here as well. Both Sandy and Dennis falls in love with one of Noah's daughters, I believe. And they, it was unknowing. They didn't know that they were both um, falling in love with the same girl at the same time. Um, but she knew. <laughs> uh, it's a little messy. Also, Sandy and Dennis was kind of getting in trouble with the Nephilims because they began to become a little suspicious of who they were. Sandy and Dennis also helped Noah to build the ark and was very anxious about leaving this timeline so as to not alter anything in human history basically. They were trying to escape and at one point Sandy was kidnapped by the Nephilims. This one's a messy one but I think this fable is a welcome version of the biblical and classic Noah's Ark Earth Flood story. I also quite enjoyed it and um, the introduction to these mythical creatures gave me insight to why God would want to basically have a flood to eradicate some of these creatures and to start over. So this was, love it. <laughs> hey guys, this is Editing Saudi and I totally forgot to talk about An Acceptance Time, one of the books in the Time Quintet series by Madeline L. Engel. This book tackles themes of greed and betrayal, love and forgiveness. Polly O'Keefe, daughter of Megan Calvin, goes to be homeschooled by her Nobel Prize winning grandmother and time traveling physicist grandfather Kate and Alex Murray in Connecticut, USA. She soon finds herself through a time gate in a world 3,000 years ago when people believed in human sacrifice, druids, who lived on the land. There was this annoying friend, Zachary Gray, who also got swept in this time space with Polly and he would give Polly up as sacrifice to cure his heart disease. The people of this time believe that Polly is somehow a goddess because she quote unquote summoned a snake, which she technically really did not. And they need rain for their crops and to live and to sacrifice a goddess would bring rain. This was their beliefs. And so the story really was centered around the strive for Polly to escape this, this sacrifice. This book echoes or nowadays period film notions on druids and I believe in this particular book has one of the most climatic and thrilling scenes in the Time Quintet series by Madeline L. Engel. Okay, so we're gonna take a break from Madeline L. Engel's books because I know there are a lot yeah, I have a couple books that were recommended to me around the same time, so I just want to share those with you before we go back into Madeline Langle's books, okay? So, the first one that I want to talk about is The Alchemist. I remember a few years ago, okay? Everybody and their mom was reading this book. I mean, Madonna was reading this book. Everybody was reading this book, okay? And I don't know, but the dust did not settle on this book for me until my really, 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 really good friend recommended this book for me because he knew of my knack for adventure and I needed to take a break from my more heavy reading materials so it was a good little like 
distraction. The Alchemist follows this shepherd from a small farming village in Spain on a treasure quest that begins with him sacrificing his business as a shepherd to travel and explore the world on his journey to the pyramid to find his buried treasure. He forms friendships, he learns a new trade and language, he finds love, and then realizes that his physical treasure was always where he was um, in his little farm and village, but his spiritual treasure was to travel and explore and broaden his horizons. <laughs> That was the treasure of the story, really. He met new people, went to new places, saw the world. It's a beautiful and heartfelt story about the importance of travel and how it can actually expand life experience and expand the mind and expand the knowledge. So the concept of this story really resonated with my inner being. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to a story that's a little bittersweet. It's a tale about another adventurer whose travels are not as quietly charmed, yet filled with disappointments and misfortunes and hiccups, which ultimately leaves him stranded on a deserted island for over 10 years years. We get to see his daily activities, um, what kept him motivated, what led to his captive nowhere's island, <laughs> and how he eventually escapes. It's a thrilling story of the love of adventure, the determination for survival, and the will to live and return home. I quite enjoyed this one. This is a quick and easy read. You can read it in a day. I, however, recommend that if you're gonna read Robin Crusoe, it's best to read it outside in nature, like in a park, on a nice picnic blanket, bring your flashlight because you are not going to want to take your head up out of this one until it's all done. Like, it's just filled with like, it's, it's a whole story. Like, I really enjoyed and love this book. <laughs> yeah, Robin Crusoe, really good adventure book. If you love adventure, you will love this, okay? Let's get back to my favorite author, Madeline Elenko. I have a series of books that you have to read. I mean, you must read. <laughs> it is The Arm of the Starfish, Dragon in the Water. Am I holding them right? Yes. Dragon in the Water and a House Like a Lotus. Aren't those like beautiful titles? The titles got me like the first time when I was looking for additional books from this author. I was like, Dragon in the Water? You're like, I, I, I want to go to the water. I want to read. I want to see the dragon. <laughs> I'm a dragon. <laughs> I want to read about dragons. <laughs> So the titles got me initially, but the stories are heartwarming and just heartfelt stories that I just feel like. Before I get into these books though, I want to mention that while these books, Madeleine L. Engel's books, these ones particularly, are marketed as teenage fiction and non-fiction fables and such, when you enter the world of Madeleine L. Engel's books, more specifically these ones, you get entrusted with the knowledge that you are a part of something way bigger, okay? And that's one of the main, the main reason why this Madeline L. Engel is one of my favorite authors. It is for these reasons, which is you are a part of something way bigger, <laughs> which is humbling and reminds me to take a break for a while, <sighs> to sit still, and connect with that way bigger energy, life-giving force. El, Jah, Allah, God, Abraham. <sighs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I just love it. I love it. <laughs> it makes me smell, taste, jump, feel, dance in a meadow of beautiful roses and flowers. Ugh. Listen to the wind. 
stay connected with that higher love force the stars the moon the human race and everything within the firmaments life-giving life-giving source energy <laughs> so the arm of the starfish this offers opportunities for us to actually think about the role science and technology plays in our lives and what responsibilities they have and how decisions are made by people their trust their loyalty and their love this is a great book to see the continuation of the, the Meg and Calvin story with an introduction of several new characters. In this story, the main character, Adam, is a young and budding marine biologist that gets the opportunity of a lifetime to go work with Calvin O'Keefe, who is one of the greatest scientists in his field, now Meg's husband. They got married in a previous story. so. All of this is happening off the coast of Portugal and on Adam's way to his summer job with Calvin, Adam gets smitten by some inconspicuous girl and then finds himself wound up and plunged into some international conspiracy of espionage and morality which involves the US kidnapping a priest and a starfish. Read the book and you will know what I'm talking about, okay? Next we got Dragon in the Water. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting these short. This one is a murder mystery. The theft of a painting and murder on a ship. The return of a fear <laughs> to an indigenous lake village in Venezuela and how it all pieces together. Honestly, this book reminds me of the initial stages of the Da Vinci Code. An abrupt murder, protecting something or someone, not knowing who to trust, searching for a painting, sending for the experts. It seems like everything just happened all at once in the initial stages of this book. But towards the middle, there's peaks and dips until we understand and witness the beautiful unfolding. It's a must read if one, you love adventure because all the characters in this book go on an adventure two you love drama and a bit of mystery and crime and three you love a redemption story and the ethereal so the next one a house like a lotus if you like an academic read you will like this it's also like a coming of age book Polly O'Keefe Meg and Calvin's daughter is finding her way through the world through her unwavering love for her female queer mentor Maximilian until that goes great <laughs> to losing her virginity <laughs> moving to a new city for like an internship type job which Maximilian sets up for her finding new friends and coming to revelations the basis of the suspense in this book is is about what caused the gray cloud over Polly um, the main character and Max's relationship and how she deals with it and eventually forgives Max so if you like an academic read you will definitely like this one I really enjoy this one okay so the next book is one of my favorite comedians one of my favorite political scientists if you will he's an author he's an actor just one of my most favorite people in the entire world <laughs> Trevor motherfucking Noah <laughs> He wrote this kind of like autobiography of his upbringing in South Africa as a mixed kid under apartheid. Yeah. Let's get a little, a little bit lighter here. His adventurous and slightly mischievous younger self burns down the house or their little cabin at one point in the story. Little Trevor liked fires. <laughs> I wonder if Big Trevor does too. <laughs> It's funny, um, while reading this book, I thought of all the similarities there were between Trevor Noah's upbringing and mine's. Having a strong matriarch in the family was the steel to the foundation for his success and driving him and 
setting boundaries for him but, but also giving him a sense of independence and just the excursions that Trevor went on and the objects found in this story was identifiable in my West Indian, uh, Caribbean, Jamaican upbringing and I felt closer to him in a sense reading this book and uh, Trevor call me okay <laughs> you're still my number one I like Trevor Noah and I like how he thinks and the way he frames things so this is one of my favorite autobiographies and I really don't like autobiographies at all but I have another one that I really like and like I mean this may be the most favored autobiography of the past couple of years becoming by Michelle Obama this is like an all-american story of the queen <laughs> Michelle Obama okay <laughs> from the struggles of her parents the love of and for her brother her academic accomplishments to becoming a lawyer a lecturer a wife a mother and later the most graceful the most loving and admired first lady of the US of A. I think it's marvelous and depicted a story so carefully, uh, charmingly, with class. It was pragmatic yet womanly and becoming and I really enjoyed Becoming by Michelle Obama. <laughs> so we're stepping into the spiritual realm. So my friends, darlings, come with me as we traverse in the universe. <laughs> so the first book that I have for you guys is Practicing the Power of Now. This one's by Eckhart Tolle. This is a very user-friendly, simple guide to awareness, consciousness, and stillness. Eckhart Tolle really makes it simple and practical for you. He really eases you into the realization of the present moment and helps you to become comfortable as pure and true awareness. Just follow the words on the pages and a whole new ideology, liberty, and beingness will be downloaded to your consciousness. I promise you this. Read it, read a few pages before meditation. Read it slow, read it fast, but try to keep an open mind when you read this book. It's quite frequency altering. Okay, I love this book. I must also say that I've read also Stillness Speaks, but I recommend practicing the power of now because I feel like Stillness Speaks is just a regurgitation of practicing the power of now. It's a good one, but this is really good. And I can read what it says on the back. All you really need to do is accept this moment fully. You are then at ease in the here and now and at ease with yourself. I don't know what's more beautiful than that. <laughs> what else do you need to hear? We're going to be talking about my spiritual Bible, my books of all books, my most valued book. Like if there was a fire and I needed to grab one book, it would be this book that I'm about to share with you right now. And yeah, I'm a little weird, but yeah, it's okay. I'm okay with my weirdness. But if I was supposed to grab one book during a fire, not that I'm trying to attract any fires fires no no thank you um but it would be this book and it is called the teachings of a grandmaster by richard baron this book is a spiritual bible filled with practical and esoteric tools to help you to become harmonious with yourself and your opponent 
these tools can also be implemented to allow you to win in life and in business. It utilizes this martial arts form called Tarishimaru Aiki Jutsu, developed by Richard Barron, and I'm telling you, you, you just have to read it. That, that, that's all I can say, read the book. If you read the book and you, and you understand it, you understand the practices, the techniques, the principles, the teachings, you understand the author's intent, the author's intent, not your own, then you were ready for this book, okay? And the knowledge and wisdom that this book entails. If you read it and you don't understand anything, you didn't understand what the literary artists put in the book, you're just not ready. And it's okay, just keep on meditating. But when it comes to spiritual texts, this one hits hard, okay? And I keep going back to the practices and principles and techniques that's inside this book. This is my spiritual Bible, my Lotus Sutra, my Quran, okay? In the sense that I hold it in high spiritual places because it's so practical and so esoteric. I guess I'm weird like that, but it's my favorite book of all time. And it's Slaps hard. It, it does. I'm getting really passionate about this one because I love it. And it says a dialogue on martial arts and spirituality. And one of the concept in this book is you learn to fight so that you don't have to fight. It's about everything in life being a literal meditation, which ties into Eckhart Tolle's book on awareness and consciousness and the importance of the present moment. So these two books tie well together. And I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm about my spiritual life. I'm about consciousness and awareness and being aware of self and evolving self from a consciousness perspective and being conscious of self so that you can evolve yourself as you want to be seen and show up in the world. So slaps. Okay, I wanna talk about some books that I'm currently reading that I'm not done yet with and I just want to make some some mentions about it one of my favorite people in the world along with Trevor Noah I have a few spots for favorite people in the world and I'm telling you this other favorite person in the world is Esther Hicks if you don't know who Esther Hicks is just type in Abraham in YouTube or just type in Esther Hicks in the YouTube search bar and you will you will you will understand you will understand about Jerry okay you will understand about source energy you will get heat and you will evolve from here okay so <laughs> I use this book which is called manifest your desires by her and Jerry as my daily devotional so I don't read it like all the way through you know how you read some books like next page next page I read it as a daily devotional because as you can see it has numbers so you just take it day by day and I think it's like 365 ways to make your dreams a reality so you read one every day and it's just like beautiful uplifting text on raising your vibration and becoming one with yourself and actualizing your desire so like today I read a big benefit from meditation that you will notice right away is that things you have been wanting will begin to show up now why is that why does 15 minutes of just being set those kinds of things in motion because you have already been asking and now during your time of meditation you have stopped the resistance that has been holding it at bay because of your practice meditation you are now allowing your desire to flow into your experience <laughs> Oh. So the next book that I'm currently reading, which I believe this book is the woman's Bible. That if you're a woman over a certain age, maybe over 21, maybe 18, if you're a woman who have lived, who have strayed from your original self, who have strayed from your natural cycles, who have strayed or just want to understand yourself a little bit more, Clarissa Pinkola Estes really uses storytelling as a way of explaining the intuitive the cycles of women and how women can come back to their intuitive insightful uh, nature natural wild woman self and I am really enjoying this one. <laughs> Let's see where I'm at. I am right here. This is what I have left to read and I can't wait. Okay, so the next one that I'm currently reading is, okay, 
before I share this book with you, I just want to say that this author, Queen Afua, I just want to say that I've actually worked with this author. Um, she's a beautiful human being and I don't meet a lot of beautiful people and when I say beautiful people I mean inside and out I mean when they just exude this high vibrational like spiritual entity and their their fucking aura is just like a rainbow of vibrance and let me tell you a little story so I worked with her as as a videographer I was hired by her like manager or somebody I don't know I was hired from a platform Platform as a videographer and I showed up to her house she had like a like a womb healing yoga class and so I did this it was a life it was like a live stream that I guess people paid for or whatever and um, so after the yoga class we had a talk she made me like this really good green juice like it's the best green juice I've ever had in my entire fucking life we talked for a little bit I sat on her floor her home is so beautiful and just exudes queen energy I mean gold and just gold and just like ah uh, her name Queen Afua is is like it aligns with everything that she exudes okay so i want to talk about her book that is the sacred woman i'm i cannot really talk much about this but um it has really great reviews i started reading it i'm not in too deep yet so i cannot give too much information but it says it's a guide to healing the feminine body mind and spirit and she has a cult following on Instagram and I can't wait to get deeper into this book and to get the the content and value from it. Like I hold it very dear to my heart because I've actually met and worked with her and she's, in, she's an inspiring woman. So if you're also a woman who is looking to heal yourself and just when I mentioned to her that I read um, Women Who Run With Wolves, she says, yes, I'm a wild woman. I'm a wild woman. I'm a wild woman. <laughs> so, um, just, just buy the book, read it. Tell me what you think, we can have a conversation. Just like, mm. <clears throat> So, the last and final book that I'm currently still reading is called The Buddha in the Mirror. And this was given to me by my Bodhisattva. If, if, you can spell bodhisattva and tell me the meaning of the word attempt right now in the comment section like i dare you to try and also if you can tell me what a bodhisattva is or who a bodhisattva is i oblige you to do that <laughs> in the comment section down below this one's a really good one this one is on nishiren buddhism and the practices and principles of nishiren buddhism I, I'm really enjoying this one. It's really giving insight to my practice as a Buddhist. And I, I have some like notes that I want to go back to to really um, solidify what I think about those chapters in the book. And I'm enjoying it. Honestly, I could have finished reading this book but it's just like one of those books that you kind of don't want to finish reading too quick. You know, you just want to like pinch it. You know when you have a, a you have a little sweet treat or or dessert and you don't want it to finish too quick and you just like mm, one little tiny scoop in one. Little... That's how I feel about this book. So that's it. <laughs> that's all the books that I I'm reading now and the books that are my favorite books in the world so far and. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video because it took some time to prepare for this video and I had to like go back in my mind and like you know do my research to like refresh myself on to refresh my memory on the stories and write my own little synopsis of the stories and I really wanted to give you guys some value in my video today so I hope it was of some value to you guys I know I in my last video I was like yeah 
I'm back and all that. So I apologize that I didn't get to it, but as you guys know, life is going on. We're living through a pandemic. I actually videoed something that I thought would be like big and a major video, but it turned out that the footage was not great. The lighting was not good at all. The questions I initially asked in the start of the video, I think the answers in the content was just like misplaced and jumbled. So I personally need to do deep deeper research into this specific subject matter before I can come and share how passionate I'm about it because I am passionate about it but I also need to do deep and further research into the specifics of everything that this story entails so that was one of the major setbacks for me and then I got a little dis okay I got a lot disappointed with myself and just like beating up on myself for a couple of weeks well good and so I'm over that now and I'm ready to do good in the world so I hope this video is of value I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you guys will go on Amazon and try to purchase some of these books or whichever local bookstore that you have or just go into a bookstore or online or just read more is the basis of this video and not like a oh, read more because I'm so better than you because I read but reading just takes you to different places i mean i went to the fifth dimension in in um i went to the fifth dimension in this book and i was literally there and you cannot tell me otherwise okay i was on camazot i was on Excel. i was out there on the great fucking planet okay with meg with charles wallace i was there and you cannot tell me otherwise so i just want you guys to know that that's been something that i really enjoy it's like a really good pastime for me and i can't wait to read more currently i'm reading something a little bit more political as well this one is called the land of promise um, my partner actually bought me this book to read it's a critique on the political Zionism and this one was expensive okay and I can't wait to read this one too I'm reading quite a few books at the same time and it's it's a lot stressful <laughs> and I'm taking my little time okay I love reading and I hope this video was of value and I hope you read some of my my books that I love and oh I wanted to tell you that I read so that I can have and accumulate books for my own home library that's the basis of me collecting books um, physical books like this because you know you can always buy books on Kindle um, read books on your phone but I collect these books because I want my children to have these books to read them I want my nieces and nephews to have these books to read them um, I want to accumulate enough books that I've read and I've kind of curated for my children for my home library so that's the basis of me actually accumulating physical books and I'm excited for my home library <laughs> it's gonna be like my sacred space that I just go to escape from the world from people maybe from my kids <laughs> For my family <laughs> I don't know I mean I know <laughs> but um I hope these books I hope this video was of value to you I hope you try to find these books online or wherever you get your books or just get books that you like you know and pass the time with something that will fully activate your mind and your thinking during this hard and stressful time in human history so one love guys <laughs> peace and ta-ta <laughs> bye bye <laughs>